So I'm continuing to work through uh, my charge distribution calculations. Uh, I, I did uh, the electric field due to a charge ring, and I'm going to use that answer to find the electric field due to a charge disk. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll put the link down below for the previous uh, calculation of the electric field due to a ring, which I also did numerically, which is pretty awesome. And I'm going to do this one numerically too, eventually, but not today. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me turn off this camera because no one really cares about seeing me. Uh, turn that off. Okay. So here we have a disk and it has a total charge Q and a radius R. And I want to find the electric field along an axis that goes through the center of the disk a distance z away. So this is on the z axis. And before I had this, the electric field due to a ring in the z direction, uh, and, and again, if I just have a single ring, like this, and I'm on this axis, the, the electric field due to this piece up here and the electric field due to this piece down here cancel in the xy plane, and so you only get an electric field in the z direction. Uh, so that's why. So I'll, if I want to break this up, the key thing is I don't have the electric field due to a disk. I have to break it into points. But instead of breaking this into a, a two-dimensional space of electric charges, points, I already know that the electric field due to a ring, I can break this into rings. And that's what I'm going to do. And since they're each ring has an electric field in the z direction. The electric field due to this is just going to be in the z direction. So what we're going to do is break this into rings, use this as the electric field due to each ring, and then add up all the rings uh, as the ring size goes to zero, and that's an integral. So let me redraw this picture. So here's the disk. And now you're looking at the disk. And so if I break this into an arbitrary ring, here's a ring. And it's like that. So the electric field due to this ring, uh, this is a, a ring of thickness dr, and it has a radius r, so that's dr. And so this is just going to be a component of the electric field in the z direction. So I can say e d e z is going to be just the electric field due to this ring. I'm going to use this equation right here, so that's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q. But now I have just the charge on this ring, which I'm going to call dq. I'll put that as dq for right now. z is fine because that's the distance from along the axis. It doesn't change as I move to different rings. And then this is the radius of the ring r. My radius is going to be lowercase r. It's going to be r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. So that's the component from one ring. And as I want to add these up, I'm going to add up in the r direction. So all my variables need to be in terms of r. So I have lowercase r, z is not a variable, right, because that's just the distance from the center, but dq is. As I, as I make bigger and bigger rings, I have more charge. So let's look at uh, the charge per area for this ring compared to the charge per area, per area for that one. So this total disk has a total charge q and an area of pi big R squared. This ring has a total charge dq now what's the area? If I if I take that and cut it and spread it out, it'd be a rectangle. And the width of that rectangle is dr, and the length is the circumference around there, so that'd be 2 pi r. Now, you may not like that, and I don't really like that, but it is true, right? Because if I let dr go to 0, as I which is what I'm doing in my integration, then that's fine. It's it's not a it's not an angled thing like that, that if you if dr is too big, it would be an angle. But even then, it's a good approximation. So I can say this is going to be 2 pi r dr. And that has units of area because of r times dr. If I solve this for dq, I get dq equals the pi's cancel, 2 q r dr over r squared. Is that right? Yeah. So now I can put that in up there and I get DEZ is, I'm going to bring all the constants out front. So I'll have this two, I'll leave the two there. Yeah. 2Q, that's on the top 
and then z, I have a z up there, and then I have 4 pi epsilon naught, and then I have the integral from r equals 0 to r equals r of this r dr over the square root of r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And that's my integral. So now I need to integrate that. And it's not too bad, right? I mean, if you practice your integration, let me rewrite, rewrite this on another piece of paper. Uh, if you can always cheat and say, oh, this isn't physics, it's integration. But, you know, you should have some basic idea about integration. Um, and it, it just comes from practice, right? The more you practice this stuff, uh, this is r equals 0 to r equals r of r dr over r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. So if I see this up here, I have a, something that looks really weird. But if I look down here, I have r squared plus z squared. And on the top, I have r dr. And, and if you practice enough, you can see, oh, what if, if I let u equal r squared plus z squared, then have u to the 3 halves on the bottom. And that's easy to do. And on the top, I'd say I have to take the derivative of du. So I have to take the derivative of this. The derivative of r squared is equal to 2r dr. The derivative of z squared is 0 because it's a, it's a parameter. So that means that this is going to be like almost like u du over u to the 3 halves, which I can do. But look at this. If I bring that 2 in there, I got the 2. So now I can write this as qz over 4 pi epsilon naught. The integral from r equals 0 to r. I'm going to leave it like this. And now I have 2r dr. That's du. And then down the bottom, I have u to the 3 halves. I can integrate that, right? Because now I just have to add 1 to the to the power raised to the, to the negative 3 halves power. So this is going to be equal to, and then I'm going to, I'm going to have to multiply by a negative 2 to make this integration work. So I get negative 2 qz over 4 pi epsilon naught naught times, uh, I can go ahead and put in um, my u back in. So I get 1 over uh, u to the 1 half. So that's going to be r squared plus z squared to the 1 half from 0 to r, big R. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that now. I get negative uh, 2 q z over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, I, I guess I could bring this in and I can do a 0 minus r. So let's put in the 0 first. So I have 1 over uh, r to the uh, put 0 in there, and I get z to the squared to the 1 half, I just get z, minus the same thing at r, so I get 1 over r squared plus z squared to the 1 half. And that's it. I'm done. Uh, in, in the, in the uh, you know, we could factor out the z if you wanted to and make this a 1. Uh, so, or I br let's bring the z in. So if I bring the z in, I get uh, 2 q over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now I have z times over z, so it's 1 minus z, z over the square root of r squared plus z squared to the 1 half. Okay, now down here... Um, I thought there was a shortcut I could get. Q over pi r squared. Did I miss an r squared somewhere? Oh, I did. Qz. Where'd that? Oh, I, I missed the r squared way up here, right? I, I made a mistake. That's why. I had... Q, there should be a, a r squared term in here, right? No, over r squared. I have it right there. But then I didn't put it down here. I left it off. So there's an r squared right there. Um, this has an r squared. This has an r squared. This has an r squared. 
this has an r squared. So now I can write this as, here I have pi r squared. Pi r squared is the area of the circle. And then I have uh, 2 over 4, so I get, is that right? It should be 1 half. No, I had another, I had another 2. 2 pi, pi r squared. I'm off by a factor of 2. I feel really bad now. I multiplied this by 2 up here, but I think... Hmm. Well, this is this definitely have q over pi r squared, so that's going to be uh, q over a. That's epsilon naught. I have that, and then I'm missing a factor of one half because I looked this up. Z over r squared plus z squared to the one half. I mean, I think it's still a pretty good derivation, even though I messed up somewhere a factor of two. Let's just check. That's good. That's this two, right? I had that two. That was from the from this two right down here. Um, then I have d e z. There's my two. That's fine. I left it in there and I brought it over here into there, and then I integrated and I got another two. Oh no, that that's right. There should be a two there. There should be a two. I didn't make a mistake. I made a mistake up here when I wrote down my answer to check at the end. So that is a two. So that's it. That's the electric field due to a ring. A disc, I'm sorry, a disc. Um, let's check a couple things, right? Let's check the units. So this is have the units of the electric field due to a point charge of one over four pi epsilon naught uh, Q over R squared. So I need this epsilon naught in the bottom, I got that. I need charge on the top, I got that. And then I need one over distance. So this, this is a distance squared. So this is a one, and here I have area squared. So that is one over distance squared. This has units of meters over meters. So that's cool too. So, so it does have the correct units. What if uh, Z goes to infinity? And so I get really far away from the disk, the electric field should get to zero. So as Z goes, gets really big, I have a Z getting really big up here, but I have a, a Z squared up here um, that also gets big. Uh, if I let, I'm not really sure now because that's square root. If I take the derivative, I think if I take the derivative and use Lahobital's rule, I'll get a, a one on the top and I'll still get another z down here because there's a z squared. So I will get uh, this is one over z, which does go to zero. So that's good. What if r goes to zero? What if r, I mean, yeah, what if, r, what if z is much greater than r? then it should be the electric field due to a point charge. So if Z is approximately equal to R, no, if Z is much greater than R, then I get just one, I get Z over here. Z over Z, one, I get zero. Which is what I thought, right? What if R goes to zero? Just R goes to zero. That's zero, no. Hmm, okay, that one I need to check, but it should kind of look like the electric field due to a point charge when you're really far away, but not too far away. Okay, so I'm I'm pretty happy with this. So, uh, so I can use this. I'm going to use this to make a numerical model and see if I get the same thing. But that'll be in another video. So I will stop there, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you found that useful.